The delicate balance between a working parent and ambitious business person is constantly being critiqued in corporate spaces. When a parent is entrepreneur, is an entrepreneur, this pressure and critique can be even more difficult to balance. Today, we will focus on the tensions between the adoption of these strategies and strategies around your children. So my name is Johnny Mokorossi, and I thank you for joining us at Wealth at Work a show that focuses on wealth creation and education in South Africa. I'm pleased to welcome my guest today, Valerie Ndo, who is the Managing Director of Batuela Strategic Solutions, a leadership development consultancy that she co-founded and has been running since 2015. So 17 years of work later, welcome Val, welcome to Wealth at Work. Thank you so much, Jolly. Okay. So it's often said that women um, have to compromise on either their children or their business goals. How do you combat this and what do you tell people who you coach uh, while still remaining an active parent? Because I think that's one of the things I've always enjoyed about you is that you are active in your children's school life. So, Jolly, I, I really take my parenting, as you know, very seriously. I know you also do. And, um, you know, I find my parenting is... is is really more important than um, it's, it's, it's my primary calling. So really just my role in my family is extremely important um, and I've never compromised that. And um, having said that, uh, one obviously has to set priorities. So whatever I decide to um, get involved in, I want to do it justice. I want to be wholehearted, um, but priorities are extremely important. So for me, it's really about setting those priorities to start with and really executing and that's normally where we go wrong as women is somewhere along the way you know and it happens we're human things start falling off and it's actually just about saying you know um it happens i mean sometimes you get it wrong you know and you leave a sick child at school until six and you really feel like oh you know but um it's it's actually just picking up and you know reprioritizing and you know taking it from where you you left off so i see myself as my children's primary educator um, so i don't see myself as someone who's supporting the teacher i am the teacher so um, i role model um, what it means to be an adult and so for me it's it's teaching my children that wisdom by them primarily watching me watching my work ethic watching where they fit into um my life you know and the priority that they have in my in, in my life and, and the life of their father excellent so so what is your view in in light of all of this on wealth and what is wealth and what are you hoping to to kind of in the context of the strategies that you see um, um or that you're, you're putting forward to to run your family how do you see all of that coming together kind of in the long-term creation of your family wealth Thanks, Jolly. And when you invited me, I think one of the first things I thought, sure, I'm, I'm definitely not an investment guru, but certainly the way I see wealth is very holistic. So um, I and I'm just thinking of it in terms of a dowry, if you allow me to, to use that analogy. So as a, a woman I'm coming in and depending on the you know, culture, as a woman coming into a marriage, I want to bring a dowry. And this is something that I, you know, the way that I've sort of trained my children, you know, you bring something into a relationship, you know, um, and everything. So wealth actually encompasses all of that, including the financial resources, the wisdom that we've been talking about, the experiences and your past, all of that becomes part of what you're bringing into a partnership. Um, and, you know, it's always important. I think one of the key elements of, you know, these discussions is, you know, what is wealth for you? What does it mean for you? How much is enough, you know? Um, and we all have different priorities. And I know, you know, I, and I, as you are as well, and your family, you know, ambitious. So I am ambitious. And, um, you know, I've always wanted to set, you know, the pace um, and just prepare for, my children to have an inheritance, which is something that most of us as Africans um, won't have, you know. And so that's that's been a priority for us, but not at the expense of their character. So for us, it's, and, and for, for me, it's really been about, you know, how do I prepare you? And it, we need to make those tweaks along the way. So if um, one, you know, if I find that I'm getting so involved in the wealth creation dimension and in terms of financial resources, investments, etc. Um, and your character, I'm actually losing you. 
then I do need to adjust the balance. So we need to actually find that time to make sure because at the end of the day, it, it, who is going to inherit all of this? Because we're all going to leave it all behind. And wh whose hands am I going to leave this in if your, your character is not intact? So I, I've heard you mention a mission a few times, not just for yourself, but also for your children. Um, how do you kind of craft your, what are the strategies, like the real practical strategies that allow you to allow allow you to pass on the baton to your children. Sure, and the, the whole ambition I've had to kind of be delivered from my offense around my husband thinks I'm, you know, um, he he's, he's thought I've been over the top for a, a long time just with the ambition. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, I'm just glad I've been paired. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've got the same issue. I've been paired with someone who it, it, it takes life a little bit slower than me, and I'm really grateful for that. So I, I know that I'm aware of the fact that I am very ambitious, um, and so it gives me uh, it kind of gives, gives me an advantage in terms of, you know, seeing. I think one of the biggest gifts that I've got, which I'm very grateful for, is seeing talent. So I do have an eye for talent. I have an eye for talent in the workplace at home, wherever I am. And sometimes some of the mistakes I've made in the corporate world, even with people, you know, as I say in corporate, who are not related to me. I'm certainly not my children is to to go up to someone and say you know you're really skilled um and i'm gonna work with you <laughs> and the person's like i don't want you to work with me you know <laughs> and i've had that with my children as well um and i'd have that conversation that night that sort of nighttime you know good night of you know you know i, I what i love about you and it's it's not, um, you know, it's not made up. It was so genuine that I just love this about you. And one day you're going to be an amazing leader. And I think I'd, I constantly said that to him. And one day I was closing the door and I said, yeah, you're going to be such an amazing leader one day. And then he was like, mommy, what if I don't want to be a leader? <laughs> I thought, what are you talking about? You know? So, yeah, so there's that. There's the extreme side of ambition where, you know, but yeah. Go ahead, but you got to say something, Jolly. No, no, I was just laughing at that because I, yes, we, we've had those moments as well where my kids are like, um, perhaps I just want to chill. <laughs> <laughs> and get by. <laughs> and get by, you know. Um, but you're so right about that. Um, I want to call it affirma affirmation and uh, just affirming your kids and just reinforcing that, that kind of, and calling out that, that thing that you want them to be and see and do. And they they literally, it feels like as you watch them grow, they walk into that role that they were created to be. Um, and I think I wanted, I also want you to touch on something that we've conversed about, but you haven't really mentioned, but um, just the role of good schools and how ordinary parents need to be active in not just picking the school, but actually active in the school itself but if i'm ambitious for my child i'm going to be a leader they're going to be a leader and all these other things but then i don't have the money for these schools <laughs> then <Right. what? laughs> absolutely and that's that's a really big the big topic right um, and the school choice is such an important discussion. I mean, I think uh, having lived it, I've, I've realized that it's bigger than what I ever thought or imagined. And maybe it's also because, you know, of the country we live in, we've got so many resources and so much choice. So the school, I think just starting off with the school choice is important. So doing enough research and starting with the end in mind. So often we jump onto the bandwagon. So we hear about this school. And I mean, there's like, if you look at the, the types of schools that we have at the moment, there's probably more than 25, 30 types of schools. And it's, it's that question of, you know, what's the ethos? Um, what is the teaching approach? What is the culture of the school? That's actually up to us as parents to investigate that. So before we jump onto the bandwagon of this school or that school, it's to actually There's understand that. Absolutely, what's the flavor of the month? And then to understand what kind of child do I have? And so if you have um, five kids, you may have five different types of child. And that's what most people find shocking because most people just think, well, I've got five kids and here's a school next to the house. Bye, y'all. Yeah. You're all going there. And that, that, that's okay, I think, sometimes for the early years, you know. Um, you know and, and again, I go back to you are the primary educator. So a lot of that learning should really be coming from you in the early years. 
that's what I just believe that when you invest in children and it, it happens at home and so you may not be I mean I'm not an expert in IT at all by any stretch of the imagination but that's a subject that they need to do it's not so much the technical it's usually the principles and the work ethic so how much time is this uh, first of all is it a con conducive environment and small things that parents don't realize that the television is one of your biggest enemies as a student. You know, I mean, I remember having a television at home and sometimes I've said- Now YouTube, like, oh. <laughs> this generation. <laughs> now it's YouTube, exactly. <laughs> so clear rules. Yeah, and Netflix. You can watch a movie and your parents don't know, you know? So clear rules about these things, you know? Um, what time are you, yeah, and you're right, the television in this house, nobody really cares about it anymore. But what time are you allowed to have your phone? You know, and um, you know, what are you doing on it? Is there visibility of what you're doing? Um, when are you studying? So some form of accountability around your, the structure of your timetable. And that's really where I come in um, with my parental coaching is, you know, um, what's, what's your timetable like? When do you get to do your homework? You know, um, are you doing it? So if I'm going to pick you up late, where can you sit? Is there a place you can sit where you can do homework? So all those considerations are part of a conversation that we can have with the children to get them to realize that it's actually a priority in this house to be prepared for what you're going to do because you actually can't make, you can't create wealth without preparation. Um, so, yeah. That is actually such a brilliant point. You are so spot on there. Without preparation, you really cannot, you, you can't, without character, without preparation, and even the couple of the other things that you've mentioned today, I think all of that is just absolutely critical in kind of, in having a long-term strategy. Um, Val, thank you so much for being our guest today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you um, um, at home or wherever you are for watching Wealth Up. We look forward to sharing more stories and profiling other dynamic entrepreneurs and business people. Please like and share and leave a comment with what topic you'd like to see next from me, Jolly Mokorosi, and my guest, Valerindo. Um, a big thank you and goodbye.